the advantages are huge for the developed world. Number one is that we actually get resources from the developed world, raw materials, uh, oil, minerals. Uh, we get people from the develop, developing world uh, that become Americans and help American uh, advance. Uh, secondly, we can't control the environment alone. Uh, the ozone hole, uh, America cannot solve this problem by itself. We need the whole world to be part of this. Uh, thirdly, diseases. When we have AIDS in Africa, it's going to influence people in America. And therefore, on, we live on one planet. And we are so interdependent that an investment from those who have it in the world of the half months is very, very important. And frankly, I don't think it just, it's just a moral issue. I think it is... Uh, it is living in harmony and peace on this planet. And we, in a way, we helping uh, the developed world living in peace and coexistence with the other part of the world. The issue of, uh, of, of terrorism, I think that if we simplify the problem, oversimplify the problem, the, ter the cause of terrorism is because of uh, the wealth that America has or because of the fact that a big population in America are Christians, uh, or because of this and this. And I think this is actually will increase terrorism around the world, in my judgment. Uh, I think really what you have to look at, in my view, as a scientist, are the economic and political forces that are changing the globe. I think if the leadership can understand and can comprehend the changes in the political and the economic forces, I am convinced we can reduce this problem of terrorism and we can live in a much better world than we're seeing today. I think the world is frustrated right now. The economic situation, the economic situation in the world, uh, the disparity between developed world, people making on the average in JDP close to $40,000 a year, and somebody, majority of the population, living on less than a dollar a day, is creating a huge gap between the half and the half months. That I'm not suggesting that the people that are living well, and we living well, you and I, that we have to lower our standards. But I think just like we do with taxes, and like we do we try to help others, I think the leadership in the developed world should be really thinking of how to help these countries economically. Economically, that's the first important thing. And in my opinion, as importantly, and especially in the Middle East, especially in the Middle East, we have to look with a new political vision, especially the United States of America. The world of the Middle East is frustrated with America. They want America to be uh, the fair broker that will solve the problem, the, the, uh, the, uh, the country that can sympathize on both sides. We must solve some of the problems in the Middle East. For example, uh, the Palestinian-Israeli problem. This problem has to be solved because there is just so much frustration there. And I see it firsthand when I visit the Middle East. The news, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock, are showing people are dying and, and the, showing the miserable state that the Middle East is in right now. And as a result of that, you're charging people, you're making people upset. Unemployment in some of these countries are reaching a record high that people also are frustrated economically. They cannot move around. They, they, and then on the top of all of this, Turk, they, are, they have dishes. They're seeing what's going on in the rest of the world. 50 years ago, 30 years ago, they haven't seen what's going on in Los Angeles and Europe in general. Yeah. Now they're seeing people driving cars, going to jobs, being able to survive. And therefore, we have to show the world that we care. It doesn't mean we'll solve every problem. It doesn't mean that we will be able to solve every problem. But we have to show the world that we do care both politically and economically.